Don't California my Arizona. Don't do it. You hear that all the time. Well, California is in Arizona every flipping weekend because they're not allowed to play sports in, in their neck of the woods. So they come to our neck of the neck of the woods and they're spreading the virus over here. So all those shutdowns by Gavin Newsom, what, you're protecting your people? No, you're just sending them across the border to us to give us your disease. Thank you. Shut your borders down, Governor Newsom. We don't need California over here. Just kidding. I'm fine with California coming over here because that gave me an opportunity for my son who played a California team on Sunday, just a friendly, and they just came over here because they're not allowed to play sports in California. Came over here, and it was an MLS uh, Academy team. We're like, oh, it's MLS, and we tied 2-2. Uh, and we we didn't play well. We should have played better, but it's we got to stop getting all excited about, oh, they're MLS. They got the... <laughs> Everything is the same. It's the same freaking people, same clubs, same coaches, same players. Nothing changed. An acronym doesn't create super teams. Anyways, that's not what I'm, this podcast is about. I don't know why I got sidetracked like that. From the San Diego Union Tribune, economic hit from youth sports restrictions grows as California teams head to Arizona, and they do. And it starts off talking about Yuma. Yuma is booming with baseball events and Surf Cup soccer tournament moves to Phoenix. Yay! Surf Cup, let's call it Desert Cup. The Yuma Fall Classic is a youth baseball tournament held earlier this month in the desert city just across the California-Arizona border. There were 51 teams entered in the 6th Division. Two were from Yuma, 49 from California. Man, that must be nice. Hotels. Packed. Teams from San Diego met in the finals of both the 11 and 12 year old divisions, part of a new bizarre parallel reality as the state's Department of Public Health reportedly prepare, prepares to announce an updated youth sports guidance that may or may not lift the prohibition uh, on games. Remember, we had the prohibition um, of alcohol. The people still drink. They did. And that's the Yuma Fall Classic, not to be confused with the Yuma Summer Sizzle, the Yuma Halloween Bash, Yuma Winter Classic, Yuma Christmas Classic, or Yuma News, uh, New Year's Showdown. And those are tournaments run by the Triple Crown Baseball, another company, National Championship Sports, has the Think Pink Fall Classic. Put, plus, it's its own Halloween Bash, the Turkey Trot Warm-Up, the Turkey Trot Classic, the Winter Wood Bat Classic, and the Winter Nationals. All in Yuma, all before the end of the year. The Think Pink Classic last weekend had 126 teams. The Halloween Bash this weekend already has 131 registered, 124 from California, mind you. We chose Yuma because it would be close for the San Diego and California teams, says uh, Luis uh, Tovar, a longtime Yuma resident and Southwest Regional Director for National Championship Sports. It just took off. It's been blowing up. I'll put it to you this way. I went online because I was trying to get an additional room for one of our umpires. The only thing I found was a Motel 6 in Yuma, which is usually about $50 per night. Per night. It was $200. That tells you what the demand is. The economy here is booming right now. Yay, Yuma! Take their money. Gavin Newsom, thank you. Thank you, California. Give us your money. Give us all your money. Reading on, California remaining one of only a handful of states prohibiting youth sports games or even contact in practice has been a source of growing frustration. Simmering over with rallies across the state this month that drew hundreds of cro children carrying signs beckoning, let us play and we matter. Lurking beneath the surface, however, is the economic impact from the, what nationally is a $19 billion industry people see kids playing on a field what they don't see are all the hidden dollars surrounding it the gas or rental car to get there the hotel room the morning starbucks runs for parents the jamba juice run for the kids between games the team dinner at the local pizza parlor the theme park entry on off days parking referees concessions and merchandise tent much of it comes from massive summer summer tournaments that bring youth athletes and their families 
to San Diego from across the country, and in some cases the world. The biggest of those is Surf Cup, the annual soccer extravaganza held over two weekends on 40-plus fields in Del Mar and Oceanside, and now it's coming to Arizona, organizes tentatively rescheduled Surf Cup to July, to Labor Day, and then to October. Then they gave up and announced it would be uh, it will be played on the last weekend of December and first weekend of January in Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. Other sports have relocated events from California to Utah, Idaho states. That, like Arizona, have more relaxed coronavirus restrictions for youth sports. Now, let's talk about that for a little bit. So all these families are picking up from California and leaving. Not permanently, but a lot of them are permanently moving. And they're going all over the country. So having a state shut down without having the border shut down is not doing anything except spreading the virus that's going to kill us all, even though it has a 99.0 percent chance of survival rate they put more of a risk in their lives by driving to arizona idaho utah the ones that actually allow the freedom of i'll take my risks i'll breathe in the poison and, and kill my body not my body because i eat healthy and i have a strong immunity how's your immunity back to the article You've ta- uh, you're talking about a lot of money that's moving out of the state, says Brian Inge, CEO of Surf Cup Sports. I think the biggest issue for anybody who runs events is with no information from our political leaders and no information from our governor. Shocker. We have to assume the worst. Nothing has changed since June. There's nothing about youth sports act- activities on any of those silly color charts, purple, red, whatever. None of these things tell us what we can open up an event. They've basically given us two choices, go out of business or go out of state. According to the Economic Impact Report commissioned by Surf Cup Sports, the 35-plus events it hosts annually at the Del Mar and Ocean Side Field complexes account for just under 500,000 attendees between parents and children, 155,000 hotel room nights, and $120 million in spending and taxes which nearly rivals the famed Comic Con convention in economic impact. That How much can California lose? It's crazy. How much can they possibly lose and hope that Biden gets in and hope that they bail California out? I hope Biden loses and California just suffers. And, and the reason I want California to suffer, I want them to get destroyed. I want them to go completely bankrupt, like beyond bankrupt, that the land becomes so cheap that I can actually get a nice house in California so I can Arizona, California. That's what I want to do. That's what we should all do. I want California to go bankrupt. I want the houses to be cheap so I can go move to California. The same goes for the dozens of baseball, softball, volleyball, basketball, and water polo polo tournaments scheduled for San Diego this year. All of them have canceled or moved out of state. That includes national championship sports, Youth Baseball World Series in mid-July with 90% of the, of the 150 teams from out of the area and a minimum six-night hotel stay. That includes County Cup, a water polo tournament across two weekends in May, hosted by San Diego Shores, one of the nation's top clubs that has ch- churned out college players for 28 years. That and a coronavirus-related limited uh, limit on pool capacity that doubles or triples rental expenses for practices compelled Uh, Shores to launch a GoFundMe page to help bridge a $150,000 shortfall. Everyone's in a shortfall situation. Anyone that's shut down is having um, shortfall issues. For example, at Phoenix College, we're shut down. So since we're shut down, we can't do any rentals. We can't, I mean, we're losing $100,000 easy just on rentals. Rentals, concessions, I mean, it just we can't do anything until things go north. I, it, so we're going to go bankrupt, and we're going to lose everything in hopes that we know what we're talking about with this coronavirus, you know, that has a 99% survival rate. I, I put more risk driving to my job. But 
Not allowed to say that because you'll get canceled. How dare you, you science denier. Yep, sorry. Ing, who has a MBA from Harvard Business School, estimated the total economic hit to San Diego County from the shutdown of youth sports at between $300 million and $500 million. How are you going to make that up? Uh, we're going to take it from other states because when Biden gets in office, we're going to um, uh, get a bailout and they're going to give it to us, us in New York. Okay. I don't think people in San Diego understand how much youth sports events drives revenues to small business and tax income for the city and county, uh, Ng says. I think they completely missed that, which is why we're not getting the attention of the politicians. Their argument is simple. Most outdoor youth sports do not transmit the virus. The most comprehensive national study conducted by the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health, <gasps> uh-oh, science, <laughs> here comes some science, be careful, examined 90,000 soccer players from 34 states across 10 weeks. It found one documented case of transmission during soccer. Let me repeat all you science believers. And this is fake science, I'm sure. The most comprehensive national study conducted by a University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health uh, examined 90,000 soccer players from 34 states across 10 weekends, and it found one documented case of transmission during soccer. Shut it down. One life is too many. Shut it down. We don't need freedom. Shut it down. Of course, we're part of society, we're part of the community, and we have to take our financial lumps with everybody else, Eng says. But we feel the entire youth sports community is being unfairly held down with no science or data that says outdoor sports are unsafe. How dare this guy speak? He, he's a Harvard graduate. He's not smart. They're holding us back and holding our feet to the uh, to the floor without allowing us to move. Whereas comparable activities like going to the beach or going to school or going out to restaurants and bars is somehow allowed. Where's the science that says outdoor sports is a problem? It doesn't. It's all about, I don't know, control, wanting to destroy the entire economy, wanting people to die from poverty. I have no idea. N nothing makes sense. But, you know, you'll get screamed at. You know, once this goes on YouTube, I'm going to get attacked by all the, the freaking uh, nut jobs. You, you want to kill grandpa. Reading on, the most immediate impact has been to sports facilities that can't gain rental income. A city of San Diego spokesman said rec centers have collected approximately $2.7 million less than expected since March, or about 57% of normal. School districts that rent their fields and gyms in the evenings and weekends have taken similar hits as w everybody's taking hits right now. Everybody. And guess what? The government isn't getting tax dollars in some places like California, and they don't know what to pay for. What, what are they going to look? Remember when California had the pension problem with the firefighters and police officers? Which is still a problem today, but it was a big problem back in the day. Um, what, what are they going to cut? They're just like, please, Biden, get in and then give us all the money. Just print money for us. Get us out of this. Um, this is why I want Biden to lose because I want to see how they deal with this. Uh, reading on. It's a shame that, A, we can't do anything. B, there's no roadmap when we can. And C, we can't get a response from anyone uh, Van Diver says. That's our frustration. We haven't been able to get an answer. We're not ready are really getting a lot of attention thrown our way. That could change as soon as Tuesday when the California Department of Public Health is expected expected to issue an update use sports guidance. The current protocol issued August 3rd allowed only physical distance practices in groups of 14 or less. Who's going to monitor all that? We have protocols too in Arizona and no one follows it. We just, you know, like, oh, look. We're doing this. Are we good? Okay, okay. And then we just do whatever we want. Meanwhile, in Yuma, a room at the Spring Hill Suites on Saturday night is going for $369 plus tax. Hey, we're getting tax dollars in Arizona. Eng says 80% of San Diego surf players have already been to Arizona at least once this summer or fall. And the number one conversation we're having within the club is how often... Parents are willing to make that drive. Tovar, the regional director from the National Championship Sports, 
has baseball tournaments booked every other weekend through the end of the year. He also quietly reserved the fields from January through July in case California doesn't budge on on its game pro, uh, prohibition. We just haven't put them up on our website yet, Tovar says, but we're ready to go. The downside for San Diego teams, driving two and a half hours to play someone from down the street. That's crazy. That is craziness. It's crazy. So you shut down, and people are still going out. This isn't political. We shut down, and the people are still going out. Going out. Democrats and Republican. They're all going out. The people are going out. Now, they might say something on Facebook or whatever, but everyone's going out. So why shut down your economy? It's silly. Because you're going to have to deal with the financial consequences, as we all are. And thank gosh I don't live in California. And I'm out. Have a wonderful day, and don't California or Arizona. Goodbye.